What's up guys? In this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know to become an expert at multicolored 3D printing with a Bamboo Lab printer and Bamboo Studio. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is open up Bamboo Studio and then on the left hand side, go ahead and select the different colors of filament that you would like to add to your part. If you don't have that set up yet, go ahead up to the device tab on Bamboo Studio and then on the right hand side, you can click the little pencil edit buttons on each of the four sections of your AMS here to change the color. Then once you have all of these colors correctly identified in your AMS, go back to the prepare tab in Bamboo Studio and now you should correctly see the different colors that you have loaded it up. So now you'll want to select the main color that you'd like for your print. I'm going to click on black and then you can use this plus button on the filament section to add the other colors that you'd like to add to your part. I'm going to use black, red, and white here. Now once you have those colors loaded up, go ahead and open your 3D model. And once you have your model loaded up, go ahead and select your model, make sure it's highlighted, and then in the top right hand side of the toolbar here, you will see a color painting button. Click on color painting here. And this is where it will let you select the different colors that you'd like to add to your print. I'm going to start with red, and then you'll want to select the tool type that you'd like to paint your part with. I'm going to walk through each one of these tools and show you how they work. Now the most important one in my opinion is the fill tool, so I'm going to start with that one. It is the second one from the right. And this tool will let you very quickly select different sections of your part and fill all of those sections based on a fill angle that you have selected. So if I keep this up to the default around 30 and I click my part, you can see the entire thing is going to be printed in that color. That's not what we want here. So we need to reduce our fill angle so that it can detect each of these edges that I would like to paint. If you bring this all the way down to zero, you see that this is even too fine and it's picking up all of the individual little layers that I have from the CAD design that I've generated. So again, we don't want to do that. We're going to select a fill value here that will allow us to select the parts of the print that we need. And in my case, I found that using Using a 1.8 millimeter fill angle will allow me to select the different flat sections of the part that I would like. Sometimes you can see that it won't detect every single surface that you may expect, so you can manually go ahead and fix these little errors that it may have made. If you ever have a part that you'd like to print in a different material such as resin, nylon, TPU, PC, or even metal, PCBWay offers custom on-demand print services for very reasonable prices. Simply head over to the 3D printing page on their website, upload your CAD model, and submit it to be created. Thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Okay, so for the next tool type, going just to the left of the fill tool, you will see the height range tool, and this will allow you to select a height layer distance. This allows me to go in and select these inner contours that may be difficult to select with my fill tool, and I can select two millimeter wide layers that will be colored in red. Again, you can very easily select the distance of this height range. You can select larger bands or even very fine bands that you would like to color in that color. Okay, that looks pretty good. And you can obviously go ahead and mix and match the different tool types here. So if I wanted to have this flat top section red as well, I can easily do that with the fill tool. Now the next tool type is the triangle. All 3D CAD models are defined in little tiny triangles to define the edges of their part. And the triangle tool type lets you very easily color these minor little sections. One great example is let's say, for example, I wanted to color this trigger in white. I wouldn't really be able to use the fill tool even with the fill angle all the way down at zero because it's going to try to select the entire front face of my part and I can't select the trigger independently of the rest of the part. But by using the triangle tool type, I can select all of the little triangle sections that make up the mesh of my CAD model. And by using the triangle tool type, I can color different sections of my part independently. And of course it will take a little bit of time, but you can fairly quickly color parts like this. Now the circle tool type is useful if you have a part that doesn't have very clear defined edges where you would like to transition from one color to the next. And here you can paint on anything you would like. If you have a complex part, you can manually paint out different sections on the walls of your part. The sphere tool is very similar to the circular tool except for the painter is spherical in nature rather than circular as you can expect from the name and this allows you to get inside tighter sections of your part and more easily paint curved sections along your part as well. If you'd like to add any text to your part you can obviously do that directly within your CAD design software or you can do it here directly in Bamboo Studio. Just go ahead and select your part and make sure it's highlighted and then up to the left hand side of the color painting button you will see a text shape button. Go ahead and click on that and then in the input text this is where you want to type the text that you would like to add. I'm going to type subscribe and then you can go ahead and hover over your part and see how this text is going to look. 
This looks like a little bit big for me, so you can go ahead and change the size of the text here on the right. I'm going to use eight millimeter text. And then you can go ahead and select the position where you would like to add the text and then click on your part to add that text. Now you can see my text has been added. However, I may want this a different color. So again, you can select your part, go to the color painting tool, go over to the fill button, and then you can go ahead and manually color this text how you would like. Again, if you have a curved section here, for example, on my S, it may be quite tricky to color this all in one click. So again, go ahead and increase your smart fill angle here. I'm going to go up to around 15 degrees, and now it's going to correctly select all of the curved sections all with just one click. Make sure you select all the different edges that you would like within that color. And now your text is going to print completely within that color. Now once you have your part completely colored up and you are ready to print, there's a couple of print settings that I would recommend changing. So on the left hand side of your screen in the filament section, you'll see a button called flushing volumes. And on this page, it is going to basically select the amount of purge material between each of the color changes within your part. Now, I find these default values are a little bit too high. You're going to have a lot of waste and a lot of time on your part when you're changing your colors and you're purging from your AMS. So one thing that you can very quickly do instead of using a 1.0 multiplier here, which is default and having these very large purge values, you can reduce this to something around maybe 0.5 or even 0.6. And this will reduce the amount of purge very quickly without having to manually calibrate each of these values. Now, if you really want to speed up your print time and reduce the amount of purge waste, make sure you go ahead and watch this video here where I show you how to calibrate these and fine tune them to really optimize the amount of purge material that you're wasting and minimize this waste and your print times. Now, also when you're printing a multicolored part like this, you have a very large purge tower here. I also find this is overkill. So if you go over to the other tab here on your print settings and you look into the prime tower section, you can change the width of this tower. I would reduce it by again, maybe 40% or so. I'm going to change mine from a 35 millimeter width down to a 25 millimeter width. And I'm gonna change the prime volume from 45 millimeters cubed down to 30 millimeters cubed. This is going to save a little bit more of your print material and also reduce your print times. And if you go to your preview section, you can go ahead and see what the size of this print tower is going to look like relative to your part. Now, finally, another option that can reduce the amount of filament waste you have is going over to the other tab again and then selecting the flush into objects infill button. If you have this button checked, it will purge your material within the infill of your part. Now, if you have a part with very thin or light colors on your walls, like if you had white, for example, you wouldn't want to purge a black color within a white wall. You'd probably be able to see that color through the walls of your part. So this really depends on what colors you have selected. But for me, I have a black wall here and there will be no issues purging a red material within my black part. Now that I have those two settings checked, go ahead and preview your part and make sure you can print this in a reasonable time. And that's it. Again, if you're doing any amount of multicolored 3D printing, make sure you check out my AMS color calibration guide video to minimize your purge waste and reduce your print times and make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.